A busy day at Thunder Bay Regional Health Sciences Center. Here is the whole story. Okay, I think we can start now. Everybody's here, so good morning everyone and thank you for joining us today. Uh, we come together for the announcement of the 2023-2024 Family Care Grants. I'd like to take this opportunity right now though to introduce a couple of board members from the foundation, Katie Kamiso and Tom Halshevik. Did I say that right, Tom? Yay. Um, so Family Care stands for Care Advancements Recommended by Employees. The grants being announced today were all born from the ideas of our frontline staff who work the closest with patients at the Health Sciences Center to fund items to enhance the exceptional care offered to their patients and their family members. It's truly rewarding for me personally and the grants committee and our donors to see the incredible impact these grants have throughout the hospital. To ensure the grants have a significant impact, each application requires the endorsement of a patient and family advisor, a manager, and an executive vice president. We all understand how busy our frontline staff are, so the fact that they took the time out of their busy days to pursue these grants is really remarkable. I'd like to applaud each and every one of them for their invaluable contributions. <laughs> Thanks to them and their ideas, multiple pieces of equipment will be making their way onto our hospital floors for better enhancing patient care. Each year, we continue to receive more and more applications a testament to the deep appreciation our frontline staff attribute to the grant program and how these items can profoundly make a significant difference to patient care. This year, 101 applications were submitted. That's a 44% increase from the previous year. We'll hear about some of these great grant applications in a few moments, but right now, I'd like to introduce and invite Rhonda Crocker Ellicott, President and CEO of the Thunder Bay Regional Health Sciences Center and CEO of the Thunder Bay Regional Health Research Institute to come up and say a few words. Rhonda? Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for coming out to this exciting announcement today. Sounds like there's an echo. A better? Okay. So uh, every year, the Health Sciences Foundation uh, takes the opportunity to support family care grants. And really, this is a wonderful opportunity for us to really live by our philosophy of care being patient and family-centered care. So this is an opportunity to look at grassroots needs or things that we uh, hear from our physicians, our staff, our volunteers that work day in and day out with our, our patients and their families and really ask them for the small things which are sometimes really big things that make a difference in the experience of care. It really enables our, our staff and those who work directly with our patients and families to identify what are those, those things that are really gaps. Or, you know, everyone has things that they would like to do better. And, and as we look at achieving on our vision and our mission, you know, what are those things that we could do? So it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to get to the grassroots and really say, you know, how can we make a difference? And I'm always incredibly impressed with the, the innovations in the family care grants and really how individuals uh, can make a meaningful impact to family care and the patient care experience throughout our organization. Um, the commitment is really to continually enhance the care experience and really look at how we can uh, live the exceptional care for every patient every time. We we'll really try to look at our vision and how can we achieve on that and looking at the family care grants, it enables us to do some of those small but big things that make that significant difference. I want to thank the Health Sciences Foundation for the ongoing commitment to support the family care grants. It's been more on for a number of years now and I know, Barry, you've been uh, I'm a huge fan of that and uh, foundation uh, for, for a number of years and really it, it gives us an ability to really connect the wonderful work the foundation does with our frontline care providers. I want to also take the opportunity to thank the donors because of course without the donations this would not be possible. And finally, I want to thank our staff. 
you take the opportunity to think about how you can provide the best possible care experience to our patients and families. You look, look at opportunities to be innovative, do things different, and look at things that are sometimes outside the box and very different. And we certainly sincerely appreciate your extra efforts um, to make that commitment to our patients and their families. And finally, our patient care advisors that work and in love with our, our, our staff, the foundation builders and donors, um, really to make that, uh, that overall connection and make it all come together. So thank you all for your overall commitment to improve the care experience and help us achieve on our vision of exceptional care for every patient, every time. Thank you. So before we go on to the agenda, this land is the traditional land of Anishinaabek people and is where they, have, they and many other Indigenous peoples have gathered for time immemorial. It is the, the treaty territory and home of the Fort William First Nation, signatory to the Robinson Superior Treaty in 1850. We also want to recognize the contribution of the Métis people of the area. Thank you. Thank you, Rondo. Appreciate that. We are very fortunate to have staff here at the hospital who care so deeply about making improvements that will benefit patients. This year, an impressive $123,417 was approved to fund 66 grants, a significant 65% increase in funding from last year's allocation, allowing us to do more faster for better local health care now. Today, we have invited some of our frontline staff members from areas around the hospital to share the details of their family care grants with you. I'd now like to invite Terry Foti, Patient Safety Improvement Specialist, Quality and Risk Management, to tell us about their grant and the benefits they are bringing to their patients. Terry. Thank you very much, Barry. So yes, I'm the patient safety improvement specialist, but I'm actually a linguist at heart. And um, in my job as patient safety, I review incident reports that the staff submit about situations that may have happened with our patients. And while I was reviewing some of these reports in the fall, I noticed that uh, occasionally our patients are having communication challenges. And um, both the staff and the patients are maybe not being able to get the message across. Uh, we do have interpretation services, but sometimes you only need a few words to really start getting that message out there. So I, I started thinking, well, Centre Bay is welcoming a lot more immigrants, refugees, international students. So we're going to start seeing more people that don't speak English as a first language coming to our hospital for care. And um, I was starting thinking about how can we help this communication process when something happens. So just to give a little bit of statistics, between 2021 and 2022, uh, we had 117 interactions uh, where the interpretation services were used between patients and staff, but I'm sure there were others that we don't have stats on. So there's definitely an opportunity here. Um, and as I said, sometimes it's just a few words we need to convey a message. So I proposed the idea of care communication cards to be designed and printed in multiple languages building off a tool that the Kansas Center had um, designed by an Indigenous navigator. Uh, it was such a great tool and I thought let's expand that. So um, they're useful also for communicating with non-verbal patients and uh, well, Aphasia Institute is going to play a part in that as well. So I got the idea together, I put my grant in and I was awarded and I'm very grateful for that. And then I decided I need to engage the clinical staff and our patient family advisor council to get some feedback on these as well. So I did that. Um, so the character and the communication cards are going to be a laminated communication tool with pictographs and corresponding words in English and in another language, uh, conveying basic patient needs and pain levels. And both the healthcare providers and the patients can use it to communicate with each other and they can be used in conjunction with the communication whiteboards in the rooms as well. Um, that may be all that's required in the moment, but it also can be used until the interpretation service can be connected uh, if more interpretation is required. 
Uh, they will be laminated, so they'll be easily cleaned and disinfected to be able to be used again. But we also plan to have a digital library so that staff can print them off as needed. There will also be a blank one where a, an essential care partner can fill in the words for the staff if they're not going to be around with the patient. So there's going to be many options for this. So uh, the communication cards will benefit our patients because providing culturally appropriate care is equivalent to safe care and being able to communicate the needs of a patient can help provide better care. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate that. Another area that grant funding will be benefiting patients and staff are those in the psychiatric intensive care unit. They will now have additional supports and items of comfort available to patients with the purchase of sensory items like stress balls, fidget spinners, stuffed animals, and Rubik's cubes. Items like these will give patients something to do in a very restricted environment by helping them stay calm when stressors can be particularly high during their admission. Next, I'd like to invite Carrie Doucette from the medical impatient medical inpatient unit 2B to speak about the grant for her unit that will be benefiting patients and staff. Hi, I'm Carrie. I'm a nurse on 2B. Um, so our grant was the vein finder. So it illuminates veins on the arms to help us find veins on patients who have difficult IV access, which in turn is going to reduce patient trauma from less IV sticks. Um, some of them can wrap around the arms so it can be used hands-free. And yep, I've used it many times. It's very helpful. It's just a one stick bulk and that's it. It's pretty self-exciting. Thank you very much, Carrie. The MRI department was another area that received family care grant funding for equipment like an arm board that will help technologists feel more comfortable giving injections and a more relaxing way for patients to receive those injections. MRI safe hearing protective earmuffs was another one for added hearing protection and for patients that are unable to use earplugs and finally new larger size lockers for patients to keep their personal belongings safe. Next, we're going to hear about family care grants that are benefiting our smallest patients. Let's welcome up our next speaker, speaker Ursula Cote, Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, and Vanessa Mahalshevik, Women and Children's Programs. <laughs> My name is Vanessa Mahaljevic, and I am the clinical nurse specialist for obstetrics. I am here to talk about the Code OB backpack that we were able to apply for, for with the CARE grant funding. So in September, the hospital initiated a uh, new overhead code called Code OB. The purpose of Code OB is to uh, produce a rapid systematic response to an obstetrical emergency taking place anywhere within the hospital. When the code is announced overhead, uh, nurses from labor and delivery, NICU, maternal newborn, as well as the on-call obstetrician, pediatrician, anesthetist, and respiratory therapist are required to respond to the location of the code. With that, nurses, of, uh, sorry, nurses from labor and delivery are supposed to grab some materials that they would potentially need in an emergency, like medications, uh, delivery instruments, and clinical documentation records but we immediately recognized that grabbing that in the moment is quite time consuming. So the care grant funding couldn't have come at a better time. We applied for uh, the Code OB backpack in an effort to reduce the time for the nurses to respond to the location of the code. Um, this will ultimately, hopefully, I, um, optimize patient outcomes. All right, hi, my name is Ursula Conte. I am a nurse in NICU, and actually on the um, suggestion of Vanessa, uh, in order to provide safer skin-to-skin -skin care for our newborns, um, we applied for the Joey Band. It's, um, it's a nice stretchy item to help facilitate safer skin-to-skin -skin care. 
um, and it's sustainably made in Canada and helps to provide all the good nutrition, um, brain and growth uh, factors that you can only get from skin to skin. Um, we've also applied for these Zaki hugs. Bree's gonna model them. <laughs> um, so these are uh, developmental positioning aids that are recommended by top developmental care experts. Um, and essentially it, um, it was designed by an NIC alum who is also a safety engineer. And she created them to essentially feel that her hand was still gonna be having her child like she wasn't able to be in the NICU. Um, the added benefit of them is that you can, the parents can wear them and imprint their scent on it so that the babies can have not only the nice weight of a hand covering them, but also their parents' scent when their parent can't be there. Um, so we really, really appreciate all the um, funding that we can get from family care grants just to be able to provide better care to our little ones. Thank you, Ursula and Vanessa. I appreciate that. Um, our little ones need special care. I wanted to share that Labor and Delivery also received grant funding for seven fans to help patients from overheating while working hard during labor. Maternal Newborn also received a new bed for the parenting room on 1C as the current room bed had been taken out of commission and 75 manual breast pumps to assist moms of low socioeconomic status continue to provide natural human milk for their newborns. Pediatrics also received funding for two diaper scales, two mounted auxiliary thermometers to be kept in isolation rooms, and a sound machine to assist patients coming in for sedation with help, with help falling asleep. Finally, I would like to welcome up Annette Clement, cultural safety educator, to speak about her that. Yeah. Thanks, Annette. Bonjour, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Barry. Um, my name is Annette Clement, and I'm the cultural safety educator. Um, so the Indigenous Collaboration Department was asked by patients and families to provide a space where they as well as staff uh, could have a cultural place to sit, talk, and be together. The benches chosen form a circle and are painted in our four sacred colors, white, yellow, red, and black. And the bench also represents our medicine meal. Also, the, the circle is a, is, is a key symbol in Indigenous spirituality, family structure, and gatherings for people to, for meetings, songs, and dances. The benches will be located in our spirit garden, which is located on the first level uh, between 1A and 1B. The garden and benches will also offer everyone a place to hold ceremonies, sharing circles, and another place to have smudging. With June being National Indigenous History Month, we are honored and excited to be able to now provide a safe cultural place for all to access. Uh, miigwech. Thank you. Thank you very much, Annette. A few more of the items funded by the Family Care Grants include a blood warmer for 1A medical oncology inpatient unit for hematology patients who often have to wait for a warmer to become available to complete their treatment. A recliner chair for 2C cardiology stoke to provide congestive heart failure patients with a necessary recline, putting their feet above heart level to sleep more comfortably. This increases circulation and reduces stress on the heart. And finally, three bariatric chairs to meet proper weight requirements and are harmless so patients can sit much more comfortable. In closing, I'd like to thank all the donors to the Thunder Bay Regional Health Sciences Foundation again for making all of these grants possible. A huge thank you to all of the frontline staff who will continue to look for new and better ways to support patient care. We are very proud of the work that's been done so far with the Family Care Grant Program and look forward to hearing from the grant recipients about the impact these grants have for patients and families. Thank you to all of our speakers for being with us.